Black American fighters need to start treating the pound for pound the same way that Devin Haney treated the WBC franchise belt. It no longer holds any value. Pound for pound no longer holds any value because the criteria is not the same as it used to be. Ten years ago, fighters had to earn their position on the pound for pound list. Nowadays, it's more based on who's liked the most. And so I call the pound for pound list a pandering list because the criteria is it's not the same as it was 10 years ago. Fighters 10, 15 years ago had to earn their position on the pound for pound list. And it wasn't easy. One or two solid wins was not enough 10 to 15 years ago for fighters to be on the pound for pound list. They needed more and then some. And this is no conspiracy, but I'm starting to believe that uh, uh, ESPN and a lot of these uh, major platforms are using the pound for pound list as a way to suck money out of other countries. Case in point, Japan. Japan is now becoming a, a ATM for the sport of boxing, and which is nothing wrong with it. But I think the pound for pound list is used just for that reason. Y'all remember when the Philippines had Manny Pacquiao and how crazy the fans were? I'm not saying boxing made a ton of money from the Philippines, but Manny Pacquiao did have a whole entire country follow him wherever he went. And we we saw HBO tried it with uh, Roman Gonzalez. Boxing tried to use Roman Gonzalez by placing him number one on the pound for pound list to drain money from his country. And you're starting to see this more. Again, I'm not calling this a conspiracy theory. I'm just believing that, you know, this may be the case with, with, this, with this pandering list. A lot of these foreign fighters come out of nowhere with a padded record, with not, with nobody on their resume being thrown high on the pound for pound list, and everybody seemed to be okay with that, you know. And and this is going, this video is going to prove that. Two thousand seventeen, the year that Terence Crawford became undisputed, and that was the same year that Andre Ward destroyed Sergey Kovalev in the rematch. The same year. Andre Ward knocked out Sergey Kovalev in their rematch. Now, prior to their rematch, their first fight was built off of pound for pound. That first fight was going to solidify who was going to be the number one pound for pound fighter. And Crawford had me came undisputed yet. And Andre Ward defeated Sergey Kovalev the first time, but wasn't placed number one on the pound for pound list. Roman Gonzalez was still the number one pound for pound fighter at that time. And then Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev ran it back four months later. And Andre Ward destroyed Sergey Kovalev, destroyed him. He still wasn't placed number one on the pound for pound list. Now, Roman Gonzalez was number one. But Roman Gonzalez hadn't beat anybody who was better than Sergey Kovalev nor the rest of the fighters that Andre Ward had beaten. But Roman Gonzalez remained number one, while Andre Ward was still placed at number two. Terrence Crawford became undisputed that same year. He became the undisputed junior welterweight champion that same year, and that didn't elevate him. Instead, boxing decided to place Lomachenko at number one. Now, what did Lomachenko had to do to become the number one pound for pound fighter the same year that uh, Andre Ward beat Sergey Kovalev and the same year that Terence Crawford became undisputed? He had to beat Miguel Mariaga, the same Miguel Mariaga that Nicholas Walters had already beaten. So after he defeated Miguel Mariaga, Lomachenko went from number five to number one. And reminds you, this is a year that he was six in one. Lomachenko beating Miguel Mariaga was somehow enough for him to jump from number five to number one on the pound for pound list. And nobody asked the question, how was that enough to supersede Terrence Crawford's undisputed status and Andre Ward beating Sergey Kovalev twice the same year? There were some outrage because it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous for Crawford to not be crowned as the number one pound for pound fighter back in 2017. 
If it wasn't going to be Andre Ward, then it should have been Crawford. It should have been Terrence Crawford, hands down, because he accomplished Undisputed. And I know some of you guys say, well, Julius and Dongo wasn't this, wasn't that. Well, Julius and Dongo wasn't the only champion that Crawford had to go through. Crawford beat Victor Posto for him to become unified. And Victor Posto at that time was a pound for pound fighter. You know, Victor Posto had a pretty solid resume before he fought Crawford. This is the same Victor Posto that knocked out Lucas Matiste. A Lucas Matiste that's never been stopped before prior to him fighting Victor Postal. His only loss was to Zab Judah and Danny Garcia. And he bounced back big after his loss to Danny Garcia. He went on to beat the crap out of Ruslan Provoknikov. I mean, beat the crap out of him. Lucas, Lucas Matiste reestablished himself as one of the best fighters at the junior welterweight division. And then Victor Postel knocked him out. And we're talking about a fighter who wasn't looked at as being a big puncher. He was more of a boxer. But Victor Postel knocked out Lucas Matiste. So Lucas Matiste had established himself as one of the top junior welterweights. So when Crawford fought him, that fight was looked at as being a 50-50 fight. And Crawford dog-walked Victor Posto. So you can't just sit there and pull Julius and Dongo out your behind to degrade Crawford's undisputed run at 140. Because Julius and Dongo wasn't the only fighter that Terrence Crawford had to go through to achieve undisputed. And see, what, what made... What put what put the pound for pound even more in a hot seat is when Crawford moved up to the welterweight division and completely destroyed Jeff Horn. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to look at Jeff Horn based on what he's doing now. But when Crawford fought Jeff Horn, Jeff Horn was coming off of a win over Manny Pacquiao. You know, say what you want about the outcome of that fight, but it didn't change the fact that Jeff Horn had Manny Pacquiao on his resume going into the Terrence Crawford fight. He was much bigger. He was more of the natural welterweight. And this was Terrence Crawford's first fight at the welterweight division. And he completely destroyed Jeff Horn. Destroyed him. But I'm guessing that wasn't enough because Lomachenko was still the number one pound for pound fighter while Golovkin was being prepped to be the number one pound for pound fighter. Gennady Golovkin, all what he needed to do, all what he had to do was beat Canelo. So they were prepping Gennady Golovkin to be the number one pound for pound fighter by trying to uh, feed Canelo Alvarez to him. And at this time, again, Crawford, three division world champion, achieved undisputed. And he was being disrespected by not being the number one pound for pound fighter. They were saving that number one spot for every other fighter but Terrence Crawford. These foreign fighters were getting credit for something that they hadn't achieved. Terrence Crawford achieved what these foreign fighters were getting credit for. And it was crazy because Lomachenko was a fighter that they were trying to help become undisputed. Gennady Golovkin, all what he talked about was the belts. Give me my belt. I want my belts. Canelo, give me my belts. He never achieved it. He never achieved undisputed. Roman Gonzalez, he wanted to become undisputed. And they were getting credit for something that they hadn't achieved. Meanwhile, Crawford had already done it. And he was being overlooked by everybody. He had all the belts. He he accomplished being multiple division world champion. But he was ignored, overlooked, disrespected. And still to this day, this is what's happening to Terrence Crawford. Guys that came out of nowhere with a padded record. Being placed on the pound for pound list. And that's crazy. Crawford should have already been the number one pound for pound fighter. If everything was done right. If the criteria were the same. Crawford would have been the number one pound for pound. The number one pound for pound fighter since 2017. He would have been the longest reigning pound for pound king. That there ever been in the sport of boxing. Because 2007 to 2024. It's damn near 10 years. That's eight years. He would have been the number one pound for pound fighter.